Maybe. Welcome to Have a Drink, the show where you learn along with us about the glorious drink called beer. I'm Brittany Walker. I'm Justin Frazier. I'm Christopher Walker. And I'm Casey Price. <laughs> you know, we've been doing this for two years, and I never quite realized how much we all do the I'm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Full radio, yeah. Except Casey, yeah. who's getting ready to always, in the back of my mind, it's, no, he's getting ready to say Casey Kasem. <laughs> that, that's what's getting ready to do. I'm Casey Kasem. All right, so... Uh, I believe, as everyone heard, we've already cracked the first one in this pack. I want to make sure that was a good, solid can popping you could hear. <laughs> I was wondering who that was, yeah. <laughs> that sounded like a shotgun. Quick, <laughs> <laughs> <Good> black. <laughs> All right, so starting off this pack of Rebels with the reformulated Rebel IPA from Samuel Adams. Mm. Interesting. These cans are different. Oh yeah, like mean? it's not like your normal can. Yeah, I was noticing that they oh, they are more of like a dip. Yeah, yeah they they are odd. I don't know, I don't know what that's about. All right, uh, someone oh, tell us about this beer. I'm just now realizing what you mean. The okay. Yeah, I was like, well, I guess the labels have changed. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's the can itself. This is the color. First of all. Hmm. So, uh, color? yeah, we're doing doing this. This rebel pack, so I guess we're starting with, with the rebel. I can smell it, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it smells good. like a beer. Yeah. Like a good beer. Uh, the rebel IPA. It's an Indian pale ale. The hops used are HBC five sixty six. So, do we know much about <laughs> that one, Casey? It's what causes uh, rage viruses. <laughs> so we've just uh, got HBC five sixty six. Ugh. Yeah, good, good foamy beer mustache now. <laughs> See <Yeah>. that? Yeah. <laughs> You've got a mustache. <laughs> Just uh, recently gotten patented. Um, hmm. But it sounds more that, like it sounds more much. like it's a, a a bill going across the the house floor. House right. resolution HBC mm. five sixty six. Uh, also included in this is HBC six eighty two. So I'm guessing Santa. I think that one. I think that one's their first attempt to repeal Obamacare. <laughs> then they get into actual named hops. Then we have Mosaic, Cascade, Simcoe, Centennial, Chinook. Like they they threw everything but the kitchen sink into this. All, all the hops in this. Maybe that's what those those hops are. They're kitchen sink hops. <laughs> hmm. It's new. Well, the 566 appears to be just for uh, Sam Adams. Okay. Malts used, again, Sam Adams getting into this, uh, the Sam Adams two-row pale malt blend, which is like their specialty. And wheat. And wheat. <laughs> uh, the color, it's going to be light golden. Yeah, yeah, it's... Yeah, very, good job. Yep, accurate. Very, yeah. <laughs> right on the nose there. Uh, ABV, 6.5%, and IBUs at 45, so kind of on the mid-level on everything there. What they had to say about it is when we first brewed Rebel IPA in our Nano Brewery in 2014, we wanted to do something that went a little bit against the grain by brewing a West Coast-style IPA that wasn't just about bitterness, but had balance and paid homage to the aromatics and flavors of some of our favorite West Coast hops. We loved Rebel IPA, but our brewers challenged themselves to make it even better. By challenged themselves to make it even better, they mean people didn't like it. <laughs> Nobody bought it. <laughs> And they had to reformulate it, and that's what we now have on shelves and in this pack. Mm -hmm. After more than four years, our brewer undertook uh, what they've dubbed Project 
Lupulus. Sure. Project Lupus. Lupus. No, Lupulus. I had to stop myself and be like, wait, what? Project Lupulus <laughs> refers to scientific name of a hop, Cumulus Lupulus, and its special lupulin glands, which are the fundamental source of flavor, bitterness, and aroma in hops. The project, they just keep saying it over and over again. Cumulus Lupulus, Lupidius <laughs> Jude, I've got another puzzle for you. Oh, for the project, our brewers looked to optimize the flavor of each hop variety by changing up the blend and ratio of hops for the new Rebel IPA. As part of this project, we collaborated with a hop breeder in Yakima Valley. Yakima. Yeah. To create a new hop variety that is proprietary, that's, okay, Uh, exclusive to us, called HBC 566. I think they would have come up with a fun name and said... Uh, should have named him yeah. they should have named they him Sam and John. <laughs> uh, so what came of Project Lupulus? Paying homage to the original recipe, Rebel IPA is brewed with a few of the original hop varieties. A few? Come on. That's a ton. Cascade, Centennial, Simcoe, and Chinook, with the addition of Mosaic Hops, HBC 566, and HBC 682, a new experimental bittering hop. Rebel IPA now has a more intense, juicy, tropical, and citrus flavor supported by a leaner body and crisp, clean finish to optimize the hop character. To dial up the hop impression, the newly reborn Rebel IPA removed caramel malt from the grain bill and now is brewed Woo-hoo. only with Sam Adams' special two-row malt blend. Good choice. It, yeah, I, I'm liking it. Yeah, Caramel malts can add a really sickly, sweet flavor to a beer that... I'm not a big fan of. Mm. This is, I'm getting like that um, that cracker kind of taste that you can get from um, some of these paler stuff. I have, what was the actual name for that? Isn't there a name for that? Getting that taste though. Micro- Bready, crackery. That's it. Okay. Biscuity. I was, yeah. Oh, maybe the okay biscuit thing. thing. I get. But a I nice... mean, like each each type has its own. So biscuity, crackery, bready are all different flavors. Mm. I'm getting a nice spice on this. Is anyone else getting that? Like on the front of your tongue? Like, I get a real nice pop. (laughs) I've been taking some some medicine that, like, it has killed my taste buds. So I get no flavor whatsoever out of any of these. That sucks. (laughs) It is so sad. (laughs) I didn't expect it. It's so sad. This this is his uh, Twilight Zone moment of him just... (laughs) There was time now. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, so yeah, this is the Pack of Rebels, and from Samuel Adams or Boston Beer. Uh, someone want to grab the reins on this and tell us a little bit about Boston Beer? I mean, haven't we done this before? <laughs> hey, yes. we told you before that 1984 Jim Cook discovered uh, discovered his great great grandfather's recipe for Lewis Cook Lager in his father's attic. It's Cook, right? I'm not Cook. Mm-hmm. Okay. Every time I read it, I go, there's no way I'm saying this right. No, it's it just Cook. Jim Koch. Uh, <laughs> brewed, in his, uh, brewed in his kitchen for a while until getting it right. Uh, brewed in his kitchen for a while until wanting to get it right. He wanted to change the American beer industry and introduced uh, people to craft beer. Mm, pardon me. Uh, Jim says the Boston Beer Company, that's co-founder and first employee, Rhonda Kalmel, Ka- Sure. In those first few months, uh, first few months, Jim walked bar to bar with a briefcase full of beer. That just sounds messy. Uh, that he called Samuel Adams Boston Lager in recognition of our uh, one of our nation's great founding fathers, a revolutionary man of independent mind and spirit, and privateer. Uh, Boston Lager soon became well, no, privateer is a misnamer. Smuggler. That's more accurate. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Boston Lager soon became the catalyst of the American craft beer revolution, making its public debut in Boston's Patriots Day in uh, April 1985. Six weeks after its indu- introduction, Boston Lager was selected as the best beer in America in the Great American Beer Festival's Consumer Preference Poll, uh, which uh, became an award. Sam Adams Boston Lager went on to win an unprecedented four times. Then they just get rid of the award, I'm sure. <laughs> uh what happens when you have a dedicated group to vote for a ticket uh, <laughs> and get kicked out of awards. Uh, for more on Boston Beer Company and Sam Adams, check out our audio episode on Sam Adams. Good time to mention, hey, 
We also have an audio podcast aside from this that is very educational, and we did an did entire we? episode on Sam Adams slash Boston beer. Yeah, it's one of the earlier episodes we did. What like? Yeah, it's like one of the first. It's the first brewery episode we did, I think. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> oh. So, what does everybody think about this one? I'm liking it. They've done a much better job on this. The last one had a more dark vegetal flavor to it. Mm. Um, all those rebels that they had uh, was not a big fan of those. Veggie and this one's actually really good. It's got that really nice citrusy. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, that was the first thing that kind of struck me on this one because I was just like, oh, it's citrusy. It's really nice. It's it's. Uh, you should nook in there for the the piney notes. Right. Yeah, so you, like, and you can, definitely get some of that too. It's like licking in Canadian. <laughs> mm. It's wrong kind. Hey. Uh, no, this this is a good way to start out the pack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so far, so good. Maybe it'll be like the last one where we're just like, this is great, guys. God, <laughs> keep I, just, going. I just want good packs every time. Yeah. And then when it doesn't happen, I get really disappointed. Yeah. Well, that leads me to, I'll, I'll, I'll take the reins. Let's uh, talk about what we've been into <laughs> recently. We were at uh, Beer Fest last night. Well, some of us were. Yeah, the oh, two of us. Yeah, the two of us. Some were. us. But uh, after our Kona episode, we looked at the Kona booth a little differently. Oh yeah, I sorry, I got excited. We oh, tried a new beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Kona. We tried a different beer of theirs that wasn't in the pack. So you great. did. I, I, oh, I never actually made it over there. I tried was it, the. Um, I'm gonna say it wrong though. It's Hanalei or something. L E I hmm. at the end of it. Anyway. It was uh, he, he when I when he poured it for me he was like okay this has guava passion fruit and um, orange in it and I was like okay it was delicious okay. um it did taste like guava a lot but that's fine mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean but it was it was very tasty I would recommend it I'm not the biggest guava fan so I'm like oh, it could be okay but it just it's very tropical basically. Like, honestly, I think if you like the Tropical Torpedo, it's kind of from Sierra Nevada. It's similar, but it's um, even more of that flavor than the hops. You know what I mean? And like, nice. speaking of Sierra Nevada, tune into our next audio episode <laughs> about Sierra Nevada. Yes, yeah. actually. And Which we didn't put in here. <laughs> yeah, we should have. Yeah. Um, it's all right. It's already in here now. <clears throat> Just did it. It's worked in. Nice. Mission so... accomplished. Send the troops home. <laughs> We were talking pre-show about Jungle Gems, which is where the beer fest was. It's Jungle Gems International Beer Fest. It's over two days, so there were a few of the big beers we didn't get to have because we didn't go the first night. Seems to be something we need to do is not pass up first night option. Money. But <laughs> they are winning in several ways. This is the first time they've done it, but they gave out these little notebooks. Yeah. They were great. A tasting guide. So oh, I thought it was just okay. going to be like a little blank notepads you could write your thoughts no it gives you an entire map layout of the event that is going to be blurred and there's that there imagine that it's there imagine and then oh <laughs> not only are there big ads for untapped in it it is just a pen and paper untapped for each booth with all the beers and it gives you a one to five star rating system and a little spot for notes and a check huh. thing okay. so you don't have to have your phone out the entire time killing your battery yeah. That's good. That battery's a champion. It lasts forever. But then you're like me, <laughs> and you've been doing good checking everything the whole night, and somehow you get really drunk, and it falls out of your pocket, and you didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, this one's mine. <laughs> but um, it's great for not having to keep your phone out. With that, That's what I really yeah. liked about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you happen to keep those, then you can go back over and do it later. That, no. I had to go then back to sober. hers this morning, so if anyone follows me on Untapped, they'll be like, Jesus Christ, what were you doing? <laughs> this explains why there were so many check-ins from uh, uh, our friend, the Gnarly Gnome, on Untapped. Friday, he, yeah. Friday night, yeah, he was there. Uh, Friday night, because I just kept going through like, man, how do you remember all this? He doesn't. He out. wrote it down. <laughs> but yeah, and um, then um, there was some a, a lot of good local places there, but then there was also, um, well... There's some regional places and then more nationwide. Like uh, Fatheads had a, a presence there. Um, they, of course, had some of their key stuff, like a Headhunter IPA and the Bumbleberry. They also had a really good um, coffee imperial stout called Bean Me Up Scotty. Which they brought in lieu of bringing Zeus juice, which was originally on the bill, and that's what we wanted. Yeah. Look, Zeus juice sounds juice. Again, that's the problem. It sounds very 
It doesn't sound as great as it could be. Um, but then we're like, well, what did, what did you bring? And he's like, we have Bean Me Up Scotty, or just Bean Me Up <laughs> Imperial Coffee Stout. It's like, good switch, good switch. <laughs> and it was delicious, one of the best beers of the night. Yeah, there was a lot of great stuff there. Um, nothing like crazy rare, or, or you know, this has been aged in a barrel for four years, you know. Okay, like, Nothing no. ridiculous. Uh, they had some Firkin stuff going on. Uh, Bells had... Kalamazoo Stout. No, no, no. Oh. That, that was the fake Firkin thing for everybody else. They're like, oh, they're doing a Firkin up Bill's here. Bill's had Kalamazoo Stout. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> well, no. The, and the sun rises. In the, okay. They had a Firkin-sized barrel when they're like, oh, we're doing a Firkin tapping. And it said Kalamazoo Stout. And I was like, are there, is it really a Kalamazoo Stout Firkin? Like, what, some weird twist? No, it was just a tiny barrel of Kalamazoo Stout. And I was like, that's yeah. not a Firkin. <laughs> but he went over to the actual Bell's booth, and they had Oberon... With habanero and mango. Yeah. And it lit you up. It was like fresh habanero in that beer. Like, it, the back of my throat was on fire. I was searching for something. It's a good thing uh, New Holland was like right next to them. It's like, we got to get some dragon's milk on this fire in my throat. Because <laughs> yeah, it was. Get the, that, that, that'll calm it down. Oh, um, and then. The. Uh, so, probably the, the last thing, just because whatever. But, um, as far as the national ones go, so Stone was there because obviously, and um, they had two that we hadn't tried yet and we're really interested in because one is one of which is in six packs and one is in bombers. I want to say yeah. Um, so the the special one was the Ruin Ten with orange peel and vanilla. Ooh. Yeah, it delicious. was amazing. <laughs> it it's a it was a triple Crazy IPA, goal. so it was a big heavy triple IPA. With orange peel and vanilla, like cream sickle IPA, yeah, delicious. Because stone, and then um, oh god, it just sounds so good. Yeah, and calm that, your erection. That one's the one in um, bombers. <laughs> I can't. It's just bouncing into things now, Chris. Yes. <laughs> um, the oh, other no. one that they had was the Ghost Hammer IPA, which is that. That's the one that's in six packs right now. It's their seasonal. Um, that one. I'm gonna really stop good you right there. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> But, but we need to crack this next beer. Yes, yes, yes. What's our next one? I had one prepared already. Juice. <laughs> Just ahead <laughs> of time. Right <laughs> uh, Rebel Juiced, I believe. Yep. Oh, there's nothing about this beer that I don't love. Hmm. Just smell that. I, mean, I know, right? It's... Oh it is God. unlike any other beer that I've ever smelled. Okay, All right, let me, let me talk about this thing while you guys... Yeah enjoy i've had some time to to get to know it we have a nice tasteful commitment ceremony that's going to be taking place after the podcast Mm. so (laughs) we are on the rebel juiced ipa if you're drinking along hot varieties zeus mosaic and mandarina did i say that right you smell (laughs) yep uh malt varieties sam adams two row bell malt blend uh special ingredients mango juice you know, I'm not always a fan of mango, but it works really well in this. Oh, you can taste it. It's uh, color golden, slightly veiled. Uh, it pours, by the way, super great. Like it just it's it, it's it's super hazy to pour with, and then it settles, and it's nice and nice and clear. yeah. That's that is one of the things they they call this a juiced IPA. Um, your standard Northeast IPA that's supposed to be juicy is supposed to be like. You, you just can't see through it. it looks like orange yeah. juice right yeah yeah this has that when you first pour it like and then it all like settles yeah it was really everything just like kicking up you're like oh is this like a haze and then the haze is just vanished and you're like oh no okay mm-hmm. uh but then yeah let's see wrong one there we are uh abv 6.2 percent ibus 55 <gasps> Uh, swirling with ripe aromas of mango and tropical fruits, this IPA is jam-packed with juicy, citrusy hops and mango juice. It's as if we took fresh hops and mangoes and put them in a juicer. And natural flavors. <laughs> in addition. See, I don't... I think the mango doesn't taste artificial, but there's some other kind of artificial, like, citrus there. Yeah. Look at Probably. the bottom of the can right below where the, the name is, and you, it'll say... Artificial, or I mean, uh, natural flavors added. Gotcha. Yeah, that's fine. It's still delicious. It's still delicious. No, it's yeah. This is a, like a really good summer beer. Holy oh, crap! Oh yeah. Oh, I can uh, get a six pack of this. Easy. This is in. This is like in six pack bottles too. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I think oh, there's yeah. only one of the beers in this pack that you can only get in this pack. Hmm. It's, I think, the white one. Oh, ah. these are good. Yeah, so, yeah I got uh, be white. <laughs> <laughs> the Beer Fest was a smashing success. It was great. I'm trying to think what else. I mean, I had way too many because, again, well. another way they're doing it right at Jungle Gems with their Beer Fest, it is not tickets. Like, they don't give you, here's your 20 tickets. Yeah. They, they just, like, forego that. They're like, we're not paying for the tickets like because we know you're just going to throw them away eventually and no one's going to be taking them. And they or give you someone, some champion is going to come around and drink everyone else's share. Well, exactly. Not me. <laughs> no, I no. I can't never. do that. It may have been him. Not again. Burning through there. Yeah. Uh, there just, there weren't any rare beers. Like that was, if that mm -hmm. was the one complaint I could make, there was never a chance to try a KBS or something of that mm -hmm. quality. But it just a, an embarrassment of other beers. The, honestly, the main thing is like some stuff that we, we don't get to see otherwise, like stuff that only releases at festivals and things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the biggest thing was we got to try so much stuff that we've seen and we're kind of interested in, it, but not sure if we should actually buy. And now we're like, Oh, we're buying that at some point, you know? Uh, well, uh, if we're talking about, about shenanigans over the weekend, yes. uh, I did actually have, uh, I told my friends it was bizarre. I had a day off and I didn't have to record. <laughs> so I had like the whole day to just chill out. And I was like, this doesn't normally happen. It's usually one or the other. So yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, we stopped off for uh, brunch and some beer uh, at uh, West 6th, the closest brewery to my house. Uh, and by that, I mean like, three or four blocks nice. <laughs> i missed that you gotta cross that. you gotta cross like a really big road to get there so like i don't walk it but <laughs> he's not allowed to go across without holding someone's hand <laughs> in a circle you don't want to do that like you don't want to walk that by yourself when you have no. to cross the stripper's <laughs> triangle <laughs> you'll get lost mm. and just end up on a pole somewhere <laughs> um i'm out smelling like fish oh oh, oh god <laughs> wow oh <laughs> Uh, but they uh, they were having a special. They were, they were getting ready for some concert thingy, uh, and they were doing a, a special uh, extra large twenty two ounce glass that we had to we had to go snag. Oh, nice! And it, so uh, it had. Uh, I was like, oh well, we can sit out. You know, take in a little bit of fill the nice warm fresh air. I'm gonna need me some lemongrass wheat. Oh mm. yes, I need like forty-four ounces of that because it was like six-dollar refills. Once you once you filled up this eight-dollar thing, I was like, I want to make my money's worth. Mm. Let's go. But uh, then I spent the rest of the day just going through uh, beers that have been left in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Who but, could have done that? Uh, with uh, with some other friends of mine, uh, went through like the, uh, the Evil Dead Red. Oh mm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's really nice. Uh, we got through uh, Prairie Artisan Ales. I guess it's just called Fourth Anniversary. I'm not sure, but it's yeah, their, it's just their... like Fourth Anniversary Ale or something. Yeah, but it's there. It's a sour beer with uh, with ginger. Hmm. That one was a big hit. Uh, right. And what ended up being really funny with that too was that it got to the very end. And I pour out the last bit, and it's just like this much of just yeast. <laughs> wow. I'm like, well, all right, screw it. I want to drink it. Um, and then I think we've got into the, uh, it was triple digits coffee stout, but I forget what it's called. Cortex. Cortex. Thank you. Hmm. Which I hadn't had before, but all three of these bombers I broke out, everybody's like, this is really good. I mean, yes. <laughs> I would Anything hope from so. triple digit is good. Uh, you know, just the general consensus as we go through that is just, you know, beer good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say we don't tend to buy bad beer, but if you right. 
tune in regularly, you know, yeah, it happens. <laughs> it's definitely a bad. It's sometimes definitely you a bad. disappointments. Sometimes you still have a Guinness milk stout in your fridge <sighs> several months later. I'm sorry. I thought you were like gagging. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really full. But... <laughs> Casey, what were you up to? Well, I just ran to pee, but other than that. Oh. Um, <laughs> So, oh, draw attention to the bathroom break. We were trying to cover. <laughs> uh, first Essentially, I a message I got that just said, vamp, vamp. Yeah, the, uh... Jesus. Jesus, Nick. Um... <laughs> Smallest one is 11. That, all right. Okay, no. I, I thought about pulling that on everyone. I was like, no, we're bringing like, these big things that everyone's yeah <laughs> going to enjoy. And then I was like, let's get a good smattering of stuff. Because that was my thought was... Everyone's going to be bringing some big beers. And if, because I know there's going to be like at least, well, including the four of us, there'll probably be close to 10 of us for the share. So that's why mm. I was like, whew, that's going to be a lot of high ABVs. <laughs> so glad I'm, I'm sprinkling in something a little, little lower as well. Yeah, I got to figure out what to, what to load in for that. I need to find something. The problem is I don't have anything that's like super good, that's super regional, that I don't feel like anyone else can't get. But I just forget how distribution works. <laughs> oh, find, find six. some uh, stuff from up in Louisville and take that. Um, oh, well, the first thing that pops up in my head for that is like, uh, I don't know, is Goodwood out that way? Mm. Oh, ugh. Nah. yeah. And so it's that's my first thought. Anyway. And I'm like, mm. I'm thinking the greens, where it would be from Louisville. Uh, and they're oh, everywhere. Speaking, there's some Speaking of Louisville, I had this bizarre family story thing that I thought you might, you guys would at least find funny. Was that uh, one of my cousins? She's trying to decide on where to go to college, and she this is like, well, maybe she, you know, she think. Well, like my aunt was telling me, like, well, she's thinking about going to the the uh, University of Louisville. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Not anywhere else? Couldn't? I don't know. Go work in a mine instead? No. <laughs> oh. Are you? I didn't. That's weird. I didn't think you were allowed to go to U of L if you're from Eastern Kentucky. That's what I was thinking. I thought they like to just banned you at the gate. State law. Yeah, that's She's, it's requirement. Uh, you you either go to EKU or UK. What was what made me oh, laugh is that I said that, and she my my aunt went, "Yep, no, her dad said the exact same thing." <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for a, and the, the whole family decided she's dead to us. <laughs> We've shunned her. Move in like, day. We say back goodbye. At Christmas time at one point with like a Louisville sweater. We're just gonna like we're she's gone. House divided. You can't let her out in public when she comes home. <laughs> oh, She'll God. be murdered. <laughs> Just pops up. Hey guys, you can't wear that here. Why do you have you. red on? <laughs> like, like, what do you mean here? I'm inside. Like, where I'm, I'm in the house. <laughs> like, like we no. said. <laughs> but burn all that. But that's when you're like, that's when they get like a specialized second Christmas tree, and it's all UK. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those of you who aren't aware, there is a a harsh divide between uh, University of Kentucky and University of Louisville. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for it, some reason, Kentucky is really good at feuds. <laughs> Weird. Who could imagine? Oh, oh hi. that is what we did. Uh, <laughs> feuds. He went Speaking on family. Feuds. Who did you shoot? <laughs> we so we in Pikeful we Steve have Harvey. the new. We have that new breakout room in Pikeville, and one of the rooms oh. is a Hatfield McCoy feud. Oh God! Oh, no. Jesus. So we we did go and do the uh, breakout room this past week, and it was a ton of fun. Um, so over over this six week period, um, I'm about halfway through it right now, but I will spend a total of seven nights in my own bed out of six weeks. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm so sorry. So. It's a lot of time on the road. Um, I'm in D.C. right now, so if anybody gets this in the next, like, I'll be here for a week now, so I'm sure. I, I, I just remember be... you telling me you're heading up there. I was like, if only I could have, like, swung enough vacation time to go, like, no, I'm going to D.C., yes. and I'm with Casey, and I'm hitting every museum. Yeah. Yes, and that's that's because it's all free. Like, why not? Well, like, yeah, can um, just go to the museums, and it's like, all right, Casey, get your walking shoes. We're doing we're doing the monument tour. <laughs> And that's when I'm you right track across from the, uh, the DC Library, so uh, DC Public Library. So um, I think I'm going to go over there and just see what that's all about tomorrow. Um, but 
so there's a couple small small herb breweries up here. Um, I'm kind of looking for some stuff that I can get. Small herb, uh, not small herb. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know that too. Um, and then speaking of herb, I am uh, after Salt Lake City, of course. I'll be back for maybe a week, and then I'll be heading out to um, Portland, Oregon. Sorry, Tyler. <laughs> the other Portland. Um, and so if you've got any suggestions for places out there, send them my way, because um, whether it be on the the uh, alcohol side or other intoxicant side. Oh, know. Yeah, so, no, first suggestion, alcohol-wise, is uh, Fatheads, because we just learned at the festival, because I, the guy, I was like, first of all, you have an actual representative of Fatheads, because, like, otherwise, sometimes the festivals have, like, you know, just volunteers or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and he, he is, uh, and I was like, you know, we had some beers in Portland at the brewery there, and I was like, I tried a smoked ale that was absolutely fantastic and i was like it would be great if you guys brought that to festivals he's like we don't actually have access to that he's like so though certain breweries at different locations do their own thing and he's oh. like we we can't get that in cleveland so it's like pizza port then in a way yeah because pizza port like each brewery is kind of independently operated and they do their own brew thing <laughs> but it's a chain still Right. So, yeah. So it's, okay. I mean, they have the basic stuff. Like you're, you're still going to get Bumbleberry. You're still going to get, you know, the standard Fatheads stuff. Yeah. But, um, I would but recommend anyway, going to Fatheads. Yeah. I, I would recommend going there just to get something completely like you're not going to get it anywhere else. And now for something yeah. completely different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously going to the rogue public house in yeah. Portland, go down to the Portland? distillery. Don't do the tour, though. It's trip. a pointless waste of a half an hour. Yeah. Just get tanked. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that you two were the only ones that showed up for? Yeah. Yeah. And they had a kitchen emergency, so they are like, ah, screw it. Send someone out there to take them up and tell them it's and Hank Chris, the fourths and whatever. Chris was rude. And... Yeah. It, but, I mean, you can get a good flight there, and the menu looked really good there. I kind of regret not eating there at the time. Um, cause we, oh, and that's another thing food wise, any of these cities that you can, you know, usually I can spend a decent amount on food. You know, it's not like some of these other jobs that, you know, you get a hundred dollars for a meal, you know, like 40 bucks, 50 bucks for right. a meal. Um, so if you got any ideas on some places around that range, let me know. I mean, we'll, we'll link you. Some stuff. What was, oh, what was the sushi place we went I, to? I got to find it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll you got to go to the sushi place. Yeah, we went there, and there were only, like, nice business people there, and here we rolled in, you know, stinking of yeah. <laughs> everything. The road. <laughs> the road in Yellowstone, and we're like, oh, yeah, sushi, and people are, like, offended by us. In in the hotel that I'm in right now, there's a dim sum place that I'm getting ready. Like, Ooh. I want to go down there sometime this week. Nice. That's right, I want to go down there, but I have to be on here, because you guys <laughs> suck. <laughs> we do sap the energy from people. Um. Oh my goodness! <laughs> all right, uh, I huh. think we've all cracked this next beer already, haven't we? Or... I have. All right. So this is the Rebel Grapefruit. Grapefruit. Rebel Grapefruit IPA. Grapefruit's always a great flavor for IPAs. Can so... I say I love these cans? Like they kind of really compared to the other Sam Adams art that's out now. Yeah. Yeah. They <laughs> since they're like oh, we need artwork a... on them. Oh, I'm talking about the design. Yeah. The the labeling i think it looks really sharp compared to all their other new labels which look like absolute dog crap i don't know what they were thinking i'm getting a little skunkiness off this as soon as i pour it i don't know if it'll go away here in just a second but getting like a, a aroma of skunk i smell it hopefully it doesn't stay oh cat, oh, cat. <laughs> all right i'm um, drunk i'll grab this one so uh the rebel old grapefruit ipa is Mosaic, Citra, Centennial, and Cascade Hops. This explains some of the flavors I'm getting off this. Right. Um, the malt, uh, two-row pale malt blend, and flaked oats. Interesting. Um, special ingredients are actual grapefruit juice and grapefruit peel. Um, the color is supposed to be a deep golden, which seems about right. 6.38% uh, ABV and 52 IBUs. Then uh, it says the Rebel Grapefruit is brewed with real grapefruit for a big punch of citrus that amplifies the tropical fruit and citrus notes of one of Sam Adams Brewer's favorite West Coast hops, Mosaic. Which is a, it's a weird stance to have. It's a little <laughs> hazy. 
Does anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. is. That's what I was like. I, I held it up earlier just to go like, this yeah. one, unlike the others, like it's still, it's translucent. It's not so, transparent. Brittany said it was interesting that they had uh, flaked oats yeah. in this one. So flaked oats is going to add a little bit of that haziness to it. Okay. But it also will add a mouthfeel that's a little bit creamier. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely it's there. It's borderline kind of yeah. the juiciness. Mm-hmm. So that their goal and, was juicy here. So, so that yeah, grapefruit. Well, here's the thing, though. I'm less impressed by this one than I am that juiced IPA. Yeah. I, I tell you, this, this smells like when my cats pass gas. Yeah, it does not have a good aroma. <laughs> it's so, like grapefruit, but that's, I, that's the what it brings me back in to. In fairness, you only feed your cats grapefruit, and that's what they <laughs> <laughs> so weird, yeah. So they have a it brings me back to uh, Mount Carmel, if you'll remember, Justin, that we had that mango hops and wheat at the Alltech Beer Fest that was the mango tasted so fresh and everything. Like, yeah, okay. okay. They were supposed I'm, I'm to have had... memories. I had to dig yeah. deep into the files for that one. They were supposed to have had that last night. Uh, it was tapped out. Instead, they had grapefruit mm. hops and wheat, which tasted like comparatively and that was a weedy beer but comparatively the grapefruit it tasted like a fresh grapefruit compared to this one which yeah really this one this is like ruby red grapefruit juice oh mm. to me a little bit um it just maybe not on britney's side <laughs> i'm trying to pinpoint the weird taste Brit- i'm getting britney tastes uh Tam- campbell soup can- uh, tomato soup that's only on Meritons, jeez. <laughs> I mean, it it's doesn't... almost like these cans are taller than a normal can and skinnier than a normal can, but they use the same can tops. Hmm. The, yeah, it is a weird little. It looks like it has a top. turtleneck on. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> nope. Which the, just brings me back to. Nope. This is my work laptop that I'm working. That I'm doing a lot of these these uh, searches on Google for. <laughs> nope. Not liking where this is going after turtleneck. Oh no, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, on the beer, uh... we're not talking about circumcisions. If anyone's wondering. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, you know where this? Okay, this tastes like the smell of like the dishwasher packs. <laughs> yeah. Like it's so strong okay. and okay. and artificial. Um, you know that that like intense like super fake citrus scent, and and like cleaning products really. So that <laughs> yeah, fresh piney scent. I honestly, when I first smelled it, I was like, "Is this pine salt in a in a beer form?" <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm I'm not as much of a fan of this one. That's unfortunate. No. And it I don't know if it's just because like that juiced one is so good. Right. But I, if the best um grapefruit one has still been um Oh gosh, what was it? It was another grapefruit IPA and I can't remember who the hell did it. It was probably I think it's New Belgium, but I just can't remember what the name of the beer. No, no, not not clicking on chain turtleneck and chain. From Lily Island, Casey. Not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't know. It's not bad. I mean, comparatively to... No, the other ones I've had. had worse beers. Um, Yeah, it doesn't taste like uh, gym socks, which I think is a, a big plus compared to that one pack that we had. Oh, yeah. It's... So, the victory pack. <laughs> the victory pack was pretty good. But it was that one... Everybody else liked that one beer, and I was just like, this tastes like dirty socks. I don't understand. But... Yeah, it's not as bad as all that, but it's still not great. If you were if you were aiming to make a beer taste as much like grapefruit as possible, I think this is it. Yeah, that that would probably be be like the entire grapefruit, not just the grapefruit juice, but like when you but like it's like no, there's part of me it feels like I'm I'm like yeah, because it feels like I'm licking the rind. Okay, yeah, Yeah. maybe that's the bad part, you know? Yeah, like the 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 bad part of this taste. I got some, you know what? I got these little salt packets from my, whenever I had room service bring up some stuff earlier. Let me see if a little, you know, salt on a grapefruit's always good. Let me see what it tastes like when you put a little salt on this beer. <laughs> Go for it. I was oh, like it the foams. Rim. It foams a lot. <laughs> Science. I would like a great. Let gra- see what good... happens when I drink a little bit of bourbon instead. I would like a grapefruit oh. gosa. 
Oh, does this all help? Grapefruit Gosa. I was gonna I'm say, like you said that. I was like, they're out there. Grapefruit Gosa. I want that. I mean, get to work, Casey. Mm, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, go fire up the homebrew. Patent pending chat room. <laughs> TM. This is ours. How is it, how has there not been a? Am be I part, crazy? It's going to be the flagship of the, of the Delatters Brewery. Yeah. Yeah. All or right. Watermelon goes because watermelon and, and salt always go well together. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So, okay. real quick, since it's looking like we actually have time to bring this up, uh, was it last video that we talked about? <clears throat> rate beer. It may have been the audio yeah. actually. Both. Both. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's been ongoing. It happened twice. Yeah. Ongoing. AB and Bev and their attempts to acquire the entire beer world bought rate beer. And on here, I think last episode, we brought up and we looked at individual beer ratings. A lot of people have been doing that and go, well, it doesn't look like this is affected much since they bought it back in October. Well, someone actually went to archive.org, which archives the entire effing internet. And they went back to, <laughs> to rate... An extent. To an extent. They went back to ratebeer.com, specifically... Uh, Anheuser-Busch and um, subsidiary breweries because at that time, Rate Beer had also just launched, well, it was before that, it was last year sometime they launched, uh, brewer brewery ratings. Like just overall, it's like the entire catalog and their process of brewing. And AB Bev was dog crap yeah. <laughs> on, on for a brewery rating. It was terrible. So let's let's put this out there. Because the article talks about this, but I think it talks about it a little too late. Brewery rating isn't a zero to one hundred; it's fifty to one hundred. Yes. Okay. But then it was in the toilet. Their rating was, and inexplicably, yeah, it was like low seventies. Yeah. Inexplicably, in October, it rockets up to like a ninety, where most other breweries are, where like Dogfish and you know related breweries are at. Just suddenly in October, when they, behind closed doors, were partially acquired by Anheuser-Busch yeah. InBev. Which, which, if you were to say that it was a, a brewery that, or, you know, if it went from 0 to 100, it would be more akin to something going from like a 30 and a 40 to an 80 or somewhere around that range, probably. Right. But it's their, their still... 80, 80, had, their calculations had dyslexia, is what you're telling them. <laughs> It's still well. They said that yeah. they they said that all breweries got some bump to their score. It's it's they came back with a really quick response to mm -hmm. the question, and they knew exactly what the problem was. And you don't get that in in the programming world. You know, we we have to deal with on our side. We have to deal with um, a company that creates a program for us and. We have to, you know, say, hey, there's a problem. It doesn't just come back all of a sudden that they know exactly what that problem is. They have no. to dive pretty deep into it and take some time. Yeah. They, 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 exactly they knew this was a thing. They may have been trying yeah. to fix it and then got caught while trying to fix it. Maybe. Or they knew That's they had the most idealistic from the beginning. Version of it. Yeah. yeah. But the timing is all a bit too suspicious. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, yes, individual beer rate. In my mind, it is a complete breach of what the, like they should be impartial to everything. No, this is exactly what Sam was talking about when he was saying that they like Doesn't journalistic integrity, true. like they pretty much don't have it anymore. And it's true, they don't. And you can say, yeah. oh, well, they're not journalists. Yeah, they kind of are. It, granted, the website is based on user submitted and upvoted data for the most part, so we assumed until this came out and there's still the yeah. Anheuser-Busch beverages that you can't vote on. Like they just hmm. took the scores away completely. Yeah. So it's quick. Everybody in the company, give us a 100% and then we'll take away the ability to score. Yeah. Uh, these, these beers are in perpetuity, just reflecting the scores they had when we, we took them off. That's fair. Right. <laughs> so ridiculous like no, everything about that makes me so angry <laughs> i have a feeling for because we've used rate beer on the show since the beginning and we're probably mm -hmm. gonna switch we're probably not gonna keep using rate beer anymore just to find something else so i'm going to expose my now my idea here oh, oh and this is this is 
patent patent pending TM. No, no, uh, Casey, our cameras oh, our cameras only go from like the the top third. We don't. I mean, I'm exposed. I don't. Know. Muffin will kick us off if you just start exposing yourself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how the good sergeant so, feels about nudity. I don't know if there's anybody out there who has some decent programming skills, but if you do, I have a pretty decent idea. So you all know. I don't know if anybody else out there knows, but I was in the drug rep world for a long time. <laughs> Man, that rep needed to come a little bit faster. <laughs> what? I was in the drug rep world for a while. <laughs> um, and we utilize catering a lot. And from my research, you, you have Yelp, and Yelp works good if you're going to like go and sit down in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But there's no app out there. There's no rating service for people that rate caterers. Mm -hmm. And I want there to be – and so if you're you're playing a wedding, if you're a drug rep, if you're doing all these catering events, you kind of like have your own repertoire. But if somebody comes on the scene and is doing really well, you can pick them up really quickly instead of having to worry about, oh, okay, I've got to get a relationship with them and all this. It would just be cool. Um, so very similar to Yelp or Rate Beer, it would be nice to have a service. And I – I foresee the, the commercials going like this. So we all know who Skrillex is, right? Yeah. What? Skrillex. Uh, he has the song called Bangarang. Um, okay. You, the, 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 hip, the cool kids know what I'm talking about at this point. Damn kids. I, um, I've heard of this person, but that's about I it. Mean, so, like we're, we're, is he like on a Pat Boone album? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Uh, but anyways, I want to name the service Caterate and Caterate, and I want that Skrillex song in the Haterade. background. <laughs> Haterade, Gatorade, Caterate, and Skrillex is going in the background playing his Bangarang song, and it goes, uh, it, it would go like, Caterate, don't, 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 don't. I can just see it. I, I can see it right now. So there okay. it is. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Sure. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and pepper this Copyright in. Copyright 2007. <laughs> Team. We've not we've not <laughs> talked about new upcoming beers in a little while, no. and one has caught my eye, and given me an erection. <laughs> oh. I have a love affair with Anchor's Porter. It is delicious. Eat it with chocolate or eat it. Drink it with chocolate chip cookies. And Brittany, is your marriage open enough to allow this this affair with beer? Unfortunately, it was first. I think. <laughs> Oh. So it's in the prenup. Yeah. Anchor is introducing a coffee porter. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> yes, uh, from San from the San Francisco brewery that already has an epic porter will soon come another Anchor coffee porter. The brewery's historic building on yeah, uh, we we did a whole episode about Anchor. Another one to go Anchor check out on the porter, audio. Episode. The San Francisco tree. Ding ding. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 last year, a coffee heavy porter was briefly available on draft. Uh, Anchor Coffee Porter uses San Francisco-based four-barrel coffee developed especially for this brew that is added to the brewery's famous porter recipe. So this is literally just coffee being dumped into their already amazing porter. It's not mm. a brand new recipe. That's fine. Mm. Uh, we start in the brew house with our radically traditional recipe for Anchor Porter, which we've been mm. brewing since 1972, we end up in the mm -mm -mm. cellar where we add four-barrel flash chilled coffee developed with Anchor, Whoa, especially wait, for this beer. Wait, what? What, what, what are those words? Four-barrel <laughs> four flash, barrel chilled. flash chilled coffee. What's the four-barrel? Flash chilled, I'm assuming, it means like it's cooled down really quickly. Yeah, I have no idea. They don't explain what the four-barrel is uh the result is a coffee porter of immense richness intensity boldness and smoothness with deep aromas and mouthfeel of fresh roasted coffee melted with dark roasted malts hmm. oh i mean we're trying oh. it so when All does right. it does it say when it comes out uh no announced date yet um uh, this is like what doom or what was the what was the game 
Do oh, uh, Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem. Uh, oh. Duke Nukem or... forever. Forever. Which became the joke is it? It's gonna take forever for that game to come out, and it did, <laughs> yeah. and people hated it, and I liked it. Was, everyone was like it's just like dick jokes, and I was like, yeah, that's what Duke Nukem is. It's like did, did, clearly you did not play any of the Duke Nukems. <laughs> all right. Uh, Let's. I'm, I'm going to have pop and beer number four. Yeah, by the all way. right. Yeah, I've already popped it. Okay. I have high hopes uh, no, I was for this. Say, it's 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 like uh, Half Life Three. Everything about it gets. You know. We were talking about that, to, or was it today? Yeah, yeah. On the, on the way down to Lexington, it was like no yeah. Half Life or Portal Three are never happening. Yeah. The the Mm-mm. I'm just saying, you know, it's raining today, so Half Life Three is confirmed. <laughs> right. Mm. So this is the pack Portal exclusive. It's probably the easiest of them all to make, though. Portal three, like yeah. you take Portal two and and create a new puzzle. That's all it takes, and you've got billions of dollars. I don't know, millions probably, but but you need another fun characters like the because the th- the best part about the second Portal was Cave Johnson. Make the cake come life alive. Life gives you lemon. Yeah, life gives you lemons. You will make life rue the day it gave Cave Johnson lemons. Make life take the lemons back. <laughs> I would engineer my own kind of explosive lemon. I would have burned your house down with the lemons. <laughs> the, no, the best part of that is when uh, Glados is yelling in the yeah. background. She's going, "Yeah, he's yeah!" <laughs> like he's saying what we're all thinking. <laughs> no, that's the best part. So <laughs> this is the pack exclusive, the Rebel White Citra IPA. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. An Acronox is doing oh, malt hop varieties Citra. Malt varieties, two row, and a little bit of white wheat in there, too. Um, Varieties, one. (laughs) Varieties, also one. (laughs) Uh, Colors of Pell Golden comes in at ABV of 7.3, which I think is the highest of this pack so far. Nice. Um, IBU is 50. Nice. All these have been around 50, 55. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Uh, Single hopped IPA. Uh, so we call uh, single malt smash. We call them single malt, single hop beers if it's single malt, single hop. Um, I wonder what double malt, Dimash. <laughs> Dimash. Not, not, not as catchy. An Acronox, yeah, you no. just missed us uh, <laughs> going off about the rate beer thing. <laughs> uh, but this single hopped IPA results in our exploration with Citra hops. Oh, Sam Adams is getting into its teenage years where it's exploring itself. No, no, no. They're in college now. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. By this point, actually, chronologically, they should be in grad school, but whatever. You know, there are a lot of those, like, 20-year grad students. It's okay. You know, they're they're Patrick Rothfuss. They're a philosophy. <laughs> philosophy major. But, like, they're Patrick Rothfuss, where they eventually just tell you, you have to graduate now. <laughs> or eventually they just graduate you without your knowledge, and you're like, oh, well, okay. I feel Welcome like we the went world, I guess. Oh crap! I feel like we went to a college with a lot of uh, wannabe Patrick Rothfusses, Roth- Rothfusses, <laughs> Rothfusses. <laughs> I need to grow my hair out long and move to Jamaica so I can be a Rothfusai, Ian. Ian. <laughs> Roth- Rothfusfarian. <laughs> Rothfusfarian. Uh, so Citra, a variety of hop that has become popular for its intense citrus. Imagine that. And tropical aromas and flavors. This slightly hazy IPA is bursting with grapefruit, orange, and tropical notes with a touch of white wheat. I'm Casey Kasem, and listen to this <laughs> next. No, this is. I was. My first comment was, yes, one another pretty hazy one. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, this this one's better than the last one. No, this is this is good. Uh, you can yeah. only get it in the pack, and it's. I think it rounds the pack out nicely. This yeah, one's good. If, like three out of four ain't bad, Pack. You've done well. Yeah. Uh, that'll do, Pack. That'll do. <laughs> that'll do. Uh, now this one's this one's nice. It's it's light. The the stuff blends pretty well. It's not like too heavy for all the. Right. You know, like that might have been like we think we said like that might have been the problem with the last one. It's just too much grapefruit. Well, the thing with the white, like, um... it's like all parts of the buffalo. Yeah, like I said that Casey capped that last one off really nicely when he was like. Was it Casey or was it you? I don't know. I don't want to give credit where it's not due. 
one of us said that it's the entire grapefruit. And it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, Casey. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah. no, there's definitely grapefruit rind in that flavor. And that kind of yeah. brings the beer down. But this one, this is a nice refresher for all this. So like, it's also I got a better aroma than oh yeah, than yeah. the kind of the the I don't know what to describe that grapefruit one as. But. The the white IPA is like because it, it reminds me that um the spotlight from Braxton. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm I'm kind of digging that. It's so light in flavor that the citrus kind of just flows as opposed to like any one citrus flavor standing out and being very overpowering in a bad way too. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of prefer these, but you don't see them as often for some reason. I like white IPAs, but yeah, you're right. There aren't many examples that I've come across, no. at least not on a national scale. Get a little mustache there, Casey. <laughs> Uh, do you all know all of the different styles of IPA there are out there? No. According to BJCP guidelines, let me, feel like let, me I- see, let me let me see how many I can guess. All right. I feel like we've done an entire episode on IPAs that maybe could be referenced. So, uh, okay. Let me let me ask a question before I start trying to guess guess okay. titles. It, you know, like. Specific fruit varieties are not their own nope. style. Okay. Nope. Okay. So yep. let me think. There's probably double IPAs. Yep. Uh, is Sculpin its own? Uh, no. So think <laughs> broad. Okay. Yeah, it's like a branded thing. I, yeah, I know. That's. I, I was just trying to like think like. Uh, I, I know that's just one narrative on what I'm looking at here. Um. So let's see. Double IPAs. I want to. I want to imagine somewhere out there. There's a triple IPA. But uh, there should be, but it, I don't. I don't there think is triple. it's recognized yet. There's but... white IPAs. There's well, Stone is hawking a bunch of things they bill as triple IPAs. Yeah. All right. And Acronox is saying uh, uh, fruit fruited is one subcategory. It would well fruit beers is one subcategory, but as far as uh, BJCP guidelines go, mm-hmm. that's where I'm looking at. Especially IPA category twenty one B. Um there are one, two, three, four, five, six different IPAs underneath that category. Oh, okay. White IPA is one of those. Oh. Okay. White IPA, double IPA, regular IPA, I guess. Is that uh so there's American IPA. Um mm. that, yeah. would be, okay. that would be oh because oh, there's also American there's also like, import. The true yeah. IPA that comes from <laughs> comes from, from the old PA. land. Comes from Pennsylvania. Comes from PA, the imperial lands of Pennsylvania. Brittany's cheating, and she just pulled it up. So I wasn't All playing right. the I, game. I, I, that might be as far as I can go because I'm dumb. You're not okay. Honestly, so, you won't guess some like brown IPA. Seriously, never, I've never. The hell is that? Rye though. That's when you forget about rye IPAs, which are oh, every yeah. delicious. Rye IPA. Oh. Rye IPA. Yes. Rye IPA. Yeah, I, I don't even do the other. I don't even do the other words in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. BJCP isn't recognizing uh, the New England IPA yet, is it? Uh, do not believe so. So that actually, well, it could. Great it, American a... has recognized it for its own category, but BJCP is not well, at the moment. Well, because one, they haven't updated, and two, they do have a specialty IPA category. I bet that falls under that. So especially IPA is like a, a huge, massive category that fits all the mini IPAs below it. Okay. Um, because they were changing so quickly that I think that's the way they wanted to go with it. Yeah. Um, so the way they they went with it was there was the black IPA, of course, um, the mm-hmm. Belgian IPA, right. which uses basically mm. Belgian yeast. The black IPA uses a dark malt to make it black in color. The brown IPA. Yeah, what is so that? that one goes back and it's kind of like an IPA that is very similar to a brown ale. And so that's the, sort of the, the look there is a reddish brown, dark brown, but not black look. Weird. Hmm. Wait, can... Then you got your. So the one that always got me was the red IPA versus the rye IPA because rye is always red to me. But the red IPA is a more caramelly. They use reddish caramelly colored malts 
to make it a red IPA. So that always got me. I never never really got that one. Uh, white IPA, of course, is in there. And then yeah. if you were going to look at other emerging, I think they actually came out with some emerging categories, and one of those was the uh, New England-style IPA. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what Anachronox is talking about so which, down there. Because that... I've heard there's a lot of brewers who don't like it. The New England-style, or...? You no, know, with the hazies, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's main from what I hear from brewers. It's they're kind of like, oh, the ones who can't do it don't like it and judge it, and the ones who can do it are all for it. So it used to be the other way around. Um, that used to be the people who can't do it loved it. <laughs> it used to be that the ones that were making the IPA that was hazy said, oh, yeah, this is fine. And the ones that said, oh, you can't make a good IPA the clean way that isn't hazy. You can't make oh. a, a clear IPA. They're like, you're and doing so it wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I get that. There's a lot of, no, that's not what an IPA is. And that's when they're like, well, all right, that's your West Coast-style IPA. Take your... <laughs> well, we can... I feel like we might be able to start talking about a bit more about some of that in uh, post. In post, cause yeah, post show we are. Up against our, our, we're hitting time. Our we can go over. I mean, no one, no one judges, but we like to hold ourselves to a standard. So that just means we'll have a so, robust right. post show discussion. I'm gonna go ahead and, and give my ratings on these. Um, Juiced IPA number one. Yes. Um, yeah. Tie between Rebel and Grapefruit for second and third. Place them how you like, and actually, the white is is last for me. Although not saying that it's bad, it's just you know. Uh, I think for me, it's it's rebel. Uh, it's the the regular rebel. Uh, no, sorry, it's juiced regular rebel, and then uh, white citra, and then grapefruit is my least favorite. Really, I'm gonna say overall by the pack. It's yeah, yeah. There to me, yeah, there's one about- beer that's I won't even say subpar. It's sub excellent yeah Mo- yeah, like most of these beers are pretty excellent and there's one that's not quite excellent yeah um I'll, i first of all yes i'm gonna agree buy the pack because it's actually really good especially for summer just go out and, and gra- grab these cans it's a perfect thing to take somewhere like a, a cookout or something um i as far as the rating order goes i'm just gonna agree with bob like <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the exact same way i was gonna do it um, the, the grapefruit's definitely last for me. It wasn't awful. I've definitely had worse beers, especially worse IPAs, but it it was fine, I guess. Um, but the other three were definitely better. And, and the, yeah. right before we go into post-show, we'll also talk about what's going to be happening at Nertacular since more of that's come together with some scheduling coming out. And maybe talk about what people are bringing. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Um all right, Casey, you want to close this out? Oh. Why not? <laughs> so, I'm going to pull up the show doc <laughs> and not draw attention to that, but you can go to Have a Drink Show on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. But what you really should do is go to haveadrinkshow.com. And once you go to haveadrinkshow.com, you click on that little button at the very bottom that says YouTube or looks like the little YouTube button, and you subscribe to the YouTube show. That way we can up our subscribers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then number two, you go and download the show on iTunes because that's the – actually, that really matters at this point, and you give us a rating. Even if you don't listen to it on there, go ahead and download it. Let it be downloaded to your, your pod delivery device, whatever that is. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. And don't forget, you can tell us your favorite drink, ask a question, or leave some general feedback. Uh, you can use the feed, uh, use the email address feedback at haveadrinkshow.com. I almost said the uh, feedback site. Is it- <laughs> nope, not right. No, we love to hear from you guys. Like, however, love to hear from you uh, all. Whatever you got to say. If you guys be like, no, I had this beer and it's just the tits, then that's cool. Let us know. Yeah. Let us know. Like, you know, and, and if you, if you say like, oh, no, don't, but, but don't read this out loud. Don't don't let anyone know that I like this. We won't. Well, but no, we'll start. We'll if you're like, no, I went and bought an entire case of Zimas this weekend, <laughs> and we are rocking it out. We will tell. If everyone. you have a Zima, bring it to Nerdtacular. Twenty. <laughs> we saw tons of it yeah. this weekend. I almost bought a pack, <laughs> even though I never even uh, drank it when it was out. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I was like, mm. 
All right. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, if you want to send an email, you can also use the feedback page on the website. All right, guys. <laughs> All joking fun aside, drink responsibly. Don't yes. drink and drive. Uh, all right, and then, um, so our next audio-only episode of the show, so the one that's on the podcast feed, is going to be about Sierra Nevada as a brewery, Woo! but hopefully we're nope, also trying nope, to time it. Chain. Um, I'm changing the, the show, Doc, we're just talking about mountains. <laughs> I mean, that'll be incorporated. <laughs> sure. And um, we'll be doing a video yes. episode right before we go to Nerdtacular what? that Wednesday. Are we? What? Is it going to be video, or is it going to be... I thought it was just going to be audio. <laughs> You're recording on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, person. we're doing uh, we're doing beer camp that night because that's been oh, the plan. That's right. We're getting riggedy wrecked yeah. and then coming Across to America and that's the rest of the world. We're yeah, dumb. have we bought that yet? Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna do it next week. We're we're gonna get that pack. There's plenty of it around. Yeah, it's all over the okay. place. Um, anyway, so didn't know about the video thing, but the next <laughs> audio episode is about Sierra Nevada, <laughs> and uh, that'll be up around. Uh, it'll be up around the time of Nerdtacular. So like that by the end of that week, because I'm going to be trying to edit it on the plane. <laughs> yeah. And go, go check out our 50th episode. We, yes, we, we did, did bourbon. It was actually really good. Um, the drink of our uh, homeland. I mean, I may have some bourbon still here that Ooh. someone in the chat room told me I needed to go buy. Yes. There's still plenty. I'll move my head. You can see all of it back there. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so, uh, check us out for that next audio only feed and possibly the next video feed <laughs> before Nerdtacular. Otherwise, uh -huh. we will see you guys at Nerdtacular. It's a week and a half away at this point. I'm so excited. Yes. So, uh, and stick around for a very spirited post show. Apparently yes. we have many things to talk about, including the legitimacy of hazy New England IPAs. <laughs> All right. Um, so once again, I'm Brittany Lee Walker. I'm Justin Frazier. I'm Christopher Burke. Walker. And I'm Casey Price, so keep your feet on the ground and keep <laughs> reaching for the seas. Casey Kasem. <laughs> See you next time. Have a bathroom break. <laughs>